If you were in a band of circus freaks being hunted by not to harness your powers for their war effort, what would you do? In this video, we'll follow five misfits with relatively unimpressive abilities, see if we can make better decisions, and also attempt to help the not kill them at the same time. We start out following Israel's circus freaks. The first guy, Blondie, is capable of orchestrating a cloud of fireflies and making out with a scorpion. The second guy, Clown, is a human magnet. The third guy is basically an incredibly negligent Chewbacca. Hairy, freak strength, and possibly a bit brighter than you'd expect for a Neanderthal. The fourth girl can turn light bulbs on by touching them. Right away, it becomes clear that everybody really shouldn't be going to the circus shows when there's a war going on. I mean, Nazis are blitzkrieging their way through your country, and you all decided this was a good time and place to pitch the tent? Not a good idea, especially if you're a circus freak. Because as we're about to find out, the Nazis have taken an interest in their abilities. If they can violate the Geneva Convention hard enough, commit enough war crimes through human experimentation, they might be able to harness the sheer power of fireflies. It just might be enough to turn the tides of war. I'm being sarcastic, of course. I have approximately zero idea what Death's Head sees in them. Now, if one of them could absorb bullets like the main character in a video game, I'm all in. Let's round them up. But these things, I don't think I need to explain. I will though. I don't think there's been a single significant war or conflict throughout recorded human history that is expounded on the militaristic advantage of controlling insects. Well, not that anyone's been able to, but still, it's fu stupid, okay? I'm, it's not gonna help unless you've bred some super locust swarm like in that Jurassic Park movie. Certainly not against 80,000 Sherman tanks rolling in from the west and 100,000 Russian tanks rolling in from the east. Best case scenario for Blondie is feeling the cold steel of a Luger against the back of his head before it's curtains. The clown magnet guy. Best case for him is being used as a human mind detector. Not a long career. Problem is, mind detectors already exist, and if you're out of those, you can always use the local populace. Look, we're talking about the not here, just playing by their rules. Unless Chewbacca can eat 30 odd six for breakfast, he's of limited use. Unless the key to his strength lies in his blood or something. Then I can see tying him up securely and extracting his blood like the mom in the movie Blood to then pump into the Waffen SS. Strength and endurance is so fundamental to a soldier's combat effectiveness that I could actually really see the desire to round him up. Now, I'm highly skeptical about the whole idea of pouring resources into R&D for this. Gorillas are also really strong. You don't see us trying to create a superhuman serum out of them because it's impossible. Miss light bulbs, yeah, we already have electricity, hence the light bulbs existing. Up against the wall you go. Can't let the allies get to you in case I'm wrong about the extent of your abilities. Don't bury your enemies alive and all that. Well, that was cynical and dark. Oh, I, I guess judging by the flags, these were allied bombs raining down. Well, you can forgive me if I got Italy's allegiance mixed up. No hate, I'm a habitual team switcher on Let Loose. I too enjoy being on the winning side. Luckily for the allies and for the clowns, Air Franz is the only man in the Reich that thinks they have value. And he's a dopehead who's made some eerily accurate predictions of future inventions during his trips. Okay, why do we need to find Bug Boy and Magnet Man? Bro, you've come up with the iPhone, video gaming, moon landing rovers, and some other pretty useless like fidget spinners and Rubik's cubes. You've also been able to use these vision trips to find out about the circus animals. Now, if you can dream up the schematics for an AR-15 or incept the idea of the Doppler effect in order to implement GPS technology, that'd be a hell of a win for the German army. Germany would still have to create everything and it's probably too late now. That doesn't mean far earlier in the war, he couldn't have at least tried to focus his efforts on sourcing militaristic advantages instead of children's toys and man bear pigs. If he did, combined with Hitler's interest in wonder weapons, he'd stand a good chance of getting his pet projects made, carving out a nice corner out for him and his degotten or whatever. Air Franz preps for his show. In a twist, he's a very good pianist for a drug addict. Maybe it has to do with those extra fingers. 
On the other side of the fence, things are a bit rocky. Israel wants to break the gang up and flee to America. Chewbacca throws a fit. He thinks the circus is the only job he can hold. That Americans wouldn't even let him wash dishes. Bro, you could do a full body wax and become a personal trainer. Just a suggestion. Blondie, on the other hand, wants to use the fake passport money to bang Roman Hoor. Lightbulb and Magnet are indifferent. Nothing can be decided, so they all turn in for the night. Matilda, that's Lightbulb Lady, has a nightmare, causing Israel to attempt to shake her awake. See, the thing with Matilda is she's a human taser. Nobody can touch her with all that electricity coursing through her. You guys should really invest in some more rubber gloves. What if she needed to be pulled out of a burning building? The next morning, Israel takes their money and runs. Or so they think. His journey to get them all passports has taken a bit too long, forcing the Fantastic Four to go look for him. Meanwhile, down in Franz's dungeon, he's attempting to show a superior, a man who can supposedly breathe underwater. He's got the gills for it. However, I don't think he's interested in Franz's success. He voluntarily drowns himself despite being able to. That's hardcore. It also worked. The officer orders him to cease his three-year-long pursuit of human Wunderwaffe and return to Berlin to play the piano for Hitler. Dude has nothing to show after three years. Wow, no wonder Germany's losing the war. Talk about poor management. As a Hail Mary, he shouts traitorous yet accurate predictions of what's to come for Germany. Cities raised to the ground, Hitler shooting himself, and the Nuremberg trials where this officer will be tried for crimes against peace. Shockingly, they aren't received too well. Despite this, he's given one week to find the super freaks. The circus band shows up at the town square looking for Israel and immediately realizes this isn't a great place to be right now. People are being loaded into trucks and taken to, well, you know. One poor fella tries to make a hasty break for it. <laughs> In a totally unpredictable turn of events, Chewbacca gets found out, and they all get ordered onto the trucks. At least they'll be able to find Israel now. In the truck, they're guarded with two soldiers. Hard to tell if there's more trucks behind them or if they're the last in line. If they're in the middle of the convoy, it's gonna be way harder to survive this once the driver sees the chaos and soldiers start pouring out around them. If they're in the back, I say go for it. Bug Boy distracts one guard, Magneto steals the gun, and Chewie gives the other guard the people's elbow and Matilda just watches then they throw a guard out the back flipping the motorcycle soldiers behind them in the chaos they make their great escape <laughs> Understandably, the crew ain't too happy about Matilda sitting idly by while they risked their lives to save everyone. Matilda decides to stay behind while the other three decide to join Franz's not circus. They presume he's one of the good not who will actually appreciate their talents. Sencio, forgetting that Matilda can literally turn light bulbs on with her hands, gives her a jar of fireflies so she can always see the way. Matilda skulks in the alleys trying to hide from the guards like it's Caught. The soldiers attempt to rape her. <laughs> Lucky for her, the other soldier can't figure out how to take the safety off. One of these simplest operations, he should be able to do blindfolded and drunk, and fumbles it to the ground, running for his life. The only reason she's alive right here is because that noob didn't mag dump into her the second she fried his buddy's hand. Matilda flees into the nearby woods, has a panic attack, and faints. The next morning, she's recovered by a band of Italian resistance resistance fighters called the Crippled Devil. Lucky again that she wasn't found by the Nazis. Their leader, Il Gabo, is a crazy fuck that vows to help her find Israel if she can zap some Nazis for him. It's not a bad deal. Sencio, Mario, and Fulvio arrive at Franz's circus grounds. Not gonna lie, it's pretty legit. They have lions, camels, dagger throwers, acrobats, and a badass stage. What they don't have are artists with supernatural abilities. That's a pretty big selling point. I think they stand a good chance of getting hired. Oh, there's already another fur chick? Well, a duo could work, and they certainly seem into each other. They're invited to Franz's lair for the job interview. Mario holds a spoon on his forehead. Fulvio makes origami out of a spoon, and Sencio makes a swast 
out of cockroaches. Franz is impressed. All three make the cut. Personally, I would have had Sensio shot for infesting my home with cockroaches. Everyone's riding high on the new perks of the job. That is, until the gas gets pumped in. You could try stopping it up with clothes and towels. No real use though. You're surrounded by soldiers waiting to take you down into the dungeon. Looks like Franz remembered Sensio's comments about not liking bees. Fulvio's trapped in an ice bath, and Mario strung up naked on a spinning cog. <laughs> Well, this didn't pan out quite like we hoped. Franz's henchman remarks that after his investigation, they are special, not exceptional. I'm not sure torture was required to figure that one out, but okay. Meanwhile, Matilda and the crippled devils mark their next target, a camp that none other than Israel's being transported to. She basically fucked their whole plan out by running after Israel. See, this is why you don't bring young civilians you just met onto high stakes raids. Her bold strategy isn't to distract the guards, zap them, stop them in the kill zone, or at minimum, try to pull Israel to safety. Her plan is to jump into the truck headed toward the concentration camp and yell that she's Yudin. That's it, that's the plan. Should have just let the devils ambush them as planned. Well, let's see how it works out. Okay, the soldier's pulling out his weapon, aiming at her head, and she's saved by one of the not so crippled devils with a little skirt lift. How the hell do these soldiers not sense a trap? Do you guys really think an eager pro just wandered out of the woods? Guns should be leveled. They deserve what's coming. Only problem is, nobody shot the driver, and nobody can jump out because they're all chained up. Yet another instance where Matilda could have done something and didn't. I was going to say that all she needed to do was touch the car. Yeah, maybe not a great idea after all. She could have used a glove to open the door, degloved, then grabbed the driver. Something, anything. And not only did she lose Israel again, she's rightfully pissed off the devil's leader, and he's determined to get her into the fight. <laughs> Good, good. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> I don't know how Matilda got to Franz's circus the next morning, but here she is, looking for her friends. It's not a warm welcome. She ditches the officer in a mirror maze randomly stumbles upon the death tunnel carting out the dead special not exceptional freaks then randomly stumbles into Franz's lair wow how conveniently lucky she didn't find herself in a dead end staring down a barrel that's how this would have gone down eight out of ten times not that it's going much better for her Franz spurts her in the face with some nap time spray then shoves a light bulb in her mouth the next thing the other three see is Matilda's body being carted down the hall before where Franz closes the secondary blast doors. Probably a good precaution with how strong Fulvio is. After all, can't have any mishaps during the big show tonight for the field marshal and his two ladies. Franz isn't playing the piano tonight. No, he's setting the stage for what he thinks is the future of Germany, the Four Freaks. I'm sorry, did I miss something here? How did they all go from picked off on death's door to cleaned up ready to perform? Again, why was torturing them beforehand necessary? They'd be far more eager to perform had you not beaten and jailed them prior to the show. Unless Franz has something else in mind. Yep, he's putting a hungry tiger in her cage. It's the only way to unleash the full extent of her abilities. I gotta agree. With this show being only a day after finding Matilda, coupled with her insolence, this is the most reliable method for convincing the field marshal. Apparently not. Clearly this tiger was not starved and prodded enough. Matilda's real superpower is being lucky. Now, I did say tigers were the most reliable method, and what I meant was reliable for showbiz. The most reliable method method is having a drunk soldier try to rip her. However, that's a bit distasteful for this venue. Franz's show is really falling apart. He threatens to kill all her friends if she doesn't shock the tiger, then gets picked on by said tiger and slips on said pit. He exits the stage fuming and orders the Fantastic Four to be burned alive. Magneto struggles to turn the locking mechanism from the outside to no avail. Fulvio's not strong enough to ape his way out. Sensio, well, nobody expected him to do anything for obvious reasons. It's down to Matilda. She's finally picked enough to turn herself into a door breaching explosive. 
let the freak slip out unnoticed somehow. I, I guess it makes sense nobody else would be sleeping there. I don't know. Then they walk past the man who tried to execute them multiple times and will assuredly come after them again. It would take three seconds for Fulvio to curb stomp this fool to ensure he didn't come after them or trigger an alarm. No matter, with the circus cannon all prepped and ready to fire at a moment's notice, Sensio and Matilda muzzle load themselves and get blasted to safety. <laughs> Holy sh! that cannon is powerful. No way that didn't kill them instantly. And no way they didn't break every bone in their bodies landing with that much speed. Following them to their assured death is Mario. Head goon and his henchmen finally awake from their deep slumber to kill Fulvio. Instead of simply shooting him on sight, they attempt to physically restrain the human gorilla, not even keeping one guard back with his gun trained on Fulvio while the other tried to restrain him. Absolute clowns. Oh, wait, that, that makes sense. With only the unarmed head honcho left, it's easy cleanup. The luck keeps pouring in. Fulvio's main chick just stumbles out of the gate with two horses. Not sure how this would ever be planned out ahead of time. They were literally taken from the stage to be cremated, where they escaped and fled outside together. Whatever. Oh my f God, they caught up with a train that just so happens to have Israel on board. How they knew that? I don't know. Maybe a fly told Sensio. That train also left the station like eight hours ago. It would be in another country by now. Their plan, jump on the train, kill all the no- Save Israel, and let the rest of the Jewish people burn while riding off into the sunset. <laughs> Seems the no- aren't all that impressed with their performances. Just when it looks like the show's over, Sensio makes his entrance. <laughs> really trying to sell me on Bugman is a vital tactical implement here. Not buying it. You know what would be more effective? If Fulvio, Mario, and Matilda hit the deck as Sensio sprayed everyone down with an MP40. The problem with bees is that they don't kill people. Well, unless you sting them like a metric load of times, which may be possible here. But still, Sensio's like a smite psyker in Dark Tide, laying down the crowd control. Mario's doubling as an assail psyker, throwing daggers with his incomparable mind. Fulvio's on that ogre in time, of course, bending barrels, smashing, and protecting the little ones. Sa. Matilda, she's, well, certainly not a zealot. More like a noob psyker with no control over their peril that's going to warp, plode themselves, and everyone around them. Them. Their gimmicks all work this time, astonishingly, with none of the soldiers able to get off a shot amidst the chaos. They're so confident in their abilities now, they don't even think to secure or collect the soldiers' weapons. Never mind the fact that Sensio's bee stings very well haven't killed them. If even one of those soldiers wakes up, he will mow them all down in an instant. With the train stopped, they search for Israel, and the gang is reunited at last. Look who showed up to rain on their parade, Franz. Funny how one curb stop from Fulvio would have prevented this. <laughs> Vastly outnumbered and outgunned, there's no choice but to surrender. Surely their gimmicks won't work this time. Soldiers are everywhere, on every flank, guns leveled, trigger fingers itchy. <laughs> This guy is getting marved, and nobody else shoots her. There is a guy aiming his gun at her from two feet away with a clean shot. Doesn't take it. Lucky for Matilda. Israel's got a power of his own. Well, sucks for Fulvio, Mario, and Sensio. Sorry, only room for two in the warp. Just when all hope is lost, the crippled devils catch the nuts in an ambush of their own. <laughs> It's an absolute cluster. Both sides taking massive hits due to nobody using cover. Pro tip, if you find yourself standing straight up in the middle of an open field getting shot at from multiple directions, you f***ed up. Another pro tip, if you're a guerrilla resistance militia with limited numbers, weaponry, training, and limbs, don't attack the German army head on. You gotta fight like the inglorious bastards. Israel sucks a fatal round. Mario gets hit with a ricochet. The Jews still stuck in the train car burning alive. Fulvio, well, Fulvio's doing pretty well for himself, actually. Sensio's bug friends dying by the millions to snuff the flames out with their husks. All the chaos is really triggering Matilda's fifis. The human nuke sets to explode. 
Wow, came a long way from incandescent light bulbs. All right then, the battle's won. Shame you couldn't have done that before the entirety of the crippled devils, Israel, and dozens of unnamed innocents were brutally slaughtered in that firefight. Classic zealot, claiming a clutch, when we wouldn't have even been in this situation had you done your f job before everyone got down. At least Franz has the decency to not drag his failures out any further. With that, the Jews are saved. Well, the ones in this train car. The gang's back together, except for Israel, and everyone's free for a day or so before they're all rounded back up, put on trains, and sent to the concentration camps where they will slowly and miserably perish. Ultimately, Franz and the Nazis had no real use case for the circus freaks. There was no way to extract their powers or make them use them willingly on the Allies. It was all a pointless exercise in future. Utility. There were countless moments where soldiers could have executed the freaks. Likewise, once they escaped Franz's circus, they had a chance to end him and prevent the massive ensuing casualties. For that reason, I think Freaks vs. the Third Reich was beaten. Moral of the story, kill first, die last.